Fastest way to become a software developer, 2021 edition. This time we're gonna focus on the even faster way to become a software developer this year in 2021. If you're new here, I went from broke English teacher to making 150K at Uber in SF and then leaving it all behind for my freedom, becoming a remote freelance developer. So here's how this video is gonna work. First, we're gonna talk about why would you want to become a software developer fast? What's the rush? Well, we all need income to survive and being able to profit from development simply allows you to do it as a full-time effort. Most of us just don't have the luxury to go full-time on something before we're getting paid to do it. Second, the real learning doesn't really start until you're doing real world projects. And once you can start both doing this full-time and doing real world projects, well, that's just gonna bring your learning to a much higher level. And third, let's just be honest here. None of us have unlimited motivation and your chance of success of doing something consistently for three months is just much higher if you have to do something for a year straight or more, especially when that means giving up your nights and weekends to learn. And finally, wanna work at Google? I'll be the one to be honest with you. Regardless of what anyone tells you, your chances of getting into Google for your first job are almost zero but you can and should work your way up to that after getting some real world experience first. So if being a remote software developer is your goal, or if you wanna start making money online in a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of success, then this is the video for you. Now I am not gonna ask you to smash the like button or to subscribe. I simply wanna tell you that I just released Freemote, the remote developer bootcamp, which takes you from zero to profitable freelance developer. It's a bootcamp built from the bottom up in 2021. So if that sounds potentially interesting, just check out the link, that's all. Okay, now I know you're smart, so you're thinking, this guy's just trying to sell me something, how can I trust his opinion? But in fact, the opposite is true. My opinion is so strong, I invested six months of my life into creating this, and I'm still telling you how to do it for free in this video. Now we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Okay, this video is gonna be in three parts. First, the problem. Why do most people fail? And why does success actually take so long when it doesn't really have to? Second, the solution. How do you overcome these problems and what specifically do you focus on at a high level? And third, the approach. What are the specific things you need to learn and where do you learn them to pull this off? Okay, first let's talk about the problems that almost everyone runs into, including myself. I'll make this simple. Most likely, you think you have to learn more than you actually do to get a job. Most people start by looking at a college CS degree and thinking, okay, I just need to learn all of this stuff somehow. 20 different classes, untold numbers of concepts and programming languages, and all of this one after another before getting paid a dime for programming. And I hate to say it, but even if you learn all of this, unless you're doing it full time for four years, you still won't know as much as a computer science major. So trying to compete head to head is just a losing battle. The good news is you don't need 90% of this to get your first job as a developer, specifically if you focus on being a front end and not a back end developer. By learning only what is critical to get your first job, you can get employed and start getting paid to learn more. So this basic approach is what coding boot camps set out to solve. Many people, me included, see this as a magic bullet to get that first development job. Now boot camps are a step in the right direction to be sure, but they come with their own set of issues. First, they pump out identical armies of developers, thousands per year, who are competing for the same pool of jobs. Second, the cost. One bootcamp Lambda School costs $30,000 to attend, and that's for a fully remote program that you're taking online. I don't think I need to say anything else. Third, if you look at a bootcamp curriculum, although more focused, the scope is still just way too broad. Full stack web development, two programming languages, throw a couple frameworks in there, a database, why not? If you're doing a part-time program, it takes a full year to learn all this. If you look at dropout rates, they're quite high, and even if you make it to the end, spend the money, spend the whole year, your success rate is still quite low. For these reasons, I've been quite critical of coding boot camps, and this is also why my recommendation two years ago, when I made my first fastest way to become a developer video, was to focus on just a narrower slice of this curriculum, just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. This allowed you to achieve deeper mastery in this more narrow set of skills, and also mean that you could get job ready faster. With all that said, this is still a good way to go if you want to go straight to getting a tech company job, if that's your goal. However, there is in fact an even faster strategy to becoming a developer, which is beneficial even if let's say your end goal is to work at Google. To explain, let me draw you a diagram. Here we're gonna talk about the difficulty or barrier to entry for getting different jobs in the software industry. First, let's say the Google barrier to entry is here, sky high, the highest 
and for many, getting into Google is the holy grail. Just getting an interview, let alone passing it, is extremely challenging, and the only people I know of who got this for their first job have technical degrees from highly prestigious universities. The next most challenging, let's say, is a full stack developer job, which boot camps say they teach you, and they certainly try to, but as we can see, the scope of this is just too broad, it takes too long, and because you're not getting that real world experience, you lose it before you can really use it. This also means there's a lot of competition for computer science majors for these jobs. Realistically, boot camp grads are going for the next lower barrier, which is web dev slash front end jobs, which are here. But this barrier is going up every year due to the huge amount of competition of people learning that same stack. And trust me, I coded on hiring software at Uber. All the bootcamp grad resumes look the same and we get an absolute ton of them. Anyway, the point is if you're trying to study to go straight to here or here, good luck. It's gonna take you a long time if you can get there at all. Even web dev is gonna take you quite some time with that most focused React approach probably taking you around four months to get nailed down. But let me ask you this. What if there was an even lower barrier that you could start with and then work your way up? And what if that lowest barrier even had the same pay as all the other ones? It's true, there is another type of developer you can become first, and that's called a platform developer. Regardless of whether your goal is to work your way through these stages or plant your flag and build an empire as a platform developer, this, if I was starting over, is where I would start. Okay, the solution. Let's learn more, hear me out, and even if you don't follow this strategy, I'm sure you're gonna learn a few interesting insights. Okay, effectively, what is a platform developer? Basically, it's web development plus a niche, which sounds like more than web development, but you're actually going for a narrower slice, which has a lot of benefits for you as a beginner developer. Anyway, to give an example of this, you'd have to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, plus a platform. That platform could be WordPress, it could be Salesforce, it could be an e-commerce e platform. The reason this is the best for developers starting out is because the platform takes care of a lot of complexity for you. On the back end, there is a content management system that is intuitive and easy to use. And on the front end, there's gonna be templates which you can get work modifying rather than building from scratch. So for you as a beginner, it's much more streamlined and accessible. Now, even though flexible, these platforms do have limitations and that's good news because they require customizations, integrations, and extensions. In other words, code. So you might think this development is straightforward, it's not that complex, so the pay must be lower. And it's actually not. And the reason is because there's so much demand for this development and because of the type of people who are demanding it. People using these platforms are usually two things, busy and not technical. So as long as you have more technical knowledge than they do, or if you can save them time, then you can offer them a valuable service. Now, since WordPress and platforms like Shopify are quite user-friendly, that means the total amount of people using them is much higher as opposed to, let's say, people building software as a service apps using React. And every person who builds with one of these platforms is potentially getting to need development work from you. So effectively, you can start with bite-sized tasks at your skill level, really simple things just out of the person who needs its reach, and that'll help you build up your confidence, start learning and earning at the same time, and you can even start doing this while you still have a job or are in school. Anyway, you can get going with this and only take on jobs that you're comfortable with at first, meaning much less friction and much less imposter syndrome. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Okay, now let's walk through the details of this strategy. First, what you'll need to become any kind of web or front-end developer is a basic front-end stack. That is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now the good news is this info is quite available online. You can get it a number of different places for free and it's really high quality. Udemy and pick up a great course by Cold Steel or Steven Ryder. And the only problem with these resources is they cover so much in so much detail it's actually hard to finish them. They are intentionally broad because they want to hit the widest audience possible. And in fact, web development itself is quite broad with how fast it changes, all the libraries, frameworks, and tools. So just be careful you don't get in over your head trying to take too many courses here. So in terms of learning, just watching is not enough. You can't be passive about this. In fact, as soon as you learn something new, you should be implementing it or coding it yourself. A good course should give you practice and quizzes, but many don't. But it's absolutely critical that you do this. This is particularly important when you get to JavaScript, and as soon as you know the basic syntax, you should start doing practice problems on a site like Code Wars. Now, once you have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript down, you're gonna wanna build some practice projects, and with every project you do, try to step up the ambition and the quality. This is a step where many people fail because they go straight from watching someone to build a project to trying to do one of their own from scratch, and that is very challenging to do. So again, if you can find a course that gives you training wheels projects that is giving you a similar project first, 
and then a prompt, or does parts of it for you and then makes you do the other parts yourself, that's really what you want to find. Frankly, this was one thing that coding boot camps did very well, but I see it a lot less frequently in less expensive courses. Anyway, cloning popular websites or landing pages will always be a good way to get practice. Just build your own version from the ground up, try to figure out how to build each section, and that's a good way to move forward. The bottom line for web development is this. The most important part is not what course you take, but rather how you leverage what you learn. Okay, with basic web development down, step two is choosing a platform you wanna be a developer for. So how exactly do you choose? We already talked about a few, WordPress, e-commerce, Salesforce, and blogs like Ghost. And let's go through these one by one and then I'll give you my recommendation. First, we've got blog platforms, which are often run by individuals. And unless the blog is really popular, they probably won't have much cash to throw around. And usually once they have the blog the way they want it, they won't wanna tweak it too much. Next up, let's talk WordPress, which is a really broad platform that's used to build all kinds of different websites. In fact, much the internet is built on it. So there's a ton of work to be found with WordPress jobs, but your coding skills do have to be quite good because things can get a bit complex with all the plugins and you're probably gonna have to learn some PHP too. Let's talk about CRM platforms, specifically Salesforce, which I would say is quite a good choice, but unfortunately Salesforce is used by mostly larger companies. So there's gonna be a lower overall volume of jobs. That said, one major advantage it has is you're gonna be working with businesses rather than individuals. And last up, we have e-commerce, which in my view is the best choice. And this could be WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Magento, which are just backend platforms, or Shopify, which has front end and back end. There's still a lot of development work to be done. I put e-commerce development far above the rest for a few reasons. First, the growth of e-commerce right now is absolutely insane. Second, these are businesses, not individuals, and profitable stores have a ton of cash to throw around. But unlike Salesforce, everyone and their mom is using something like Shopify to sell online meaning there's a much broader scope of potential clients for you. And finally, people are constantly customizing and tweaking their stores, meaning they're gonna need, in many cases, ongoing development work or support. Okay, now for part three, you've chosen your platform, how do you actually master it? Well, here you wanna do mostly the same as part one, where you go to Skillshare, Udemy, as well as tutorials the platform themselves built, and take in these resources as if you were gonna be the one using this platform for real. Effectively, in this stage, you wanna become a pro-level user who knows all the ins and outs, but instead of doing it for yourself, you're gonna be doing that for other people. You should be building real practice projects here. So real e-commerce stores, blogs, or WordPress sites, depending on what you chose. And one thing that helps to take this seriously is to put your projects in a real portfolio with the full intent of showing these to future clients. In any case, once you've built several projects and read up on best practices, believe it or not, you can now offer consulting slash support to help people get set up and solve problems on the platform. Now granted, you won't feel like or be a pro at this stage, but you'll know enough to help someone out who didn't take the time to formally learn this stuff. And that's all you need at first. I know you don't believe this is possible, but consider this. You spend the time learning this, but many other people just don't have time. They have businesses to run, or they just don't want to. They might have complex specifications, a large number of pages, products, or blog posts, and therefore they need support to confidently do it right. And finally, while you're tech savvy, don't underestimate how many people are technologically illiterate meaning they just suck with computers and could never figure this out on their own. What's obvious for you might not be obvious for other people. Okay, we're getting there. Stage four is to learn platform development. You have all the pieces, so this is the glue to bring it all together. You wanna to learn specifically how development works on your platform, and you'll wanna get familiar with common tasks and services that people need. Knowing when to do development is just important as knowing how, meaning you can decide when installing an app or a plugin might actually be a better option. What you have to learn here is highly platform specific, so I won't get too far into it, but just to give an example on Shopify, you have to learn the liquid templating language, as well as ThemeKit, which helps you do development for Shopify themes how themes themselves work, and how you're gonna to want to do a development workflow. Learning how to do all this in one place is slightly hard. So another little plug for Freemo Bootcamp here, we actually teach you all of this stuff in a structured way. Okay, finally we're on stage five, which is getting paid for your knowledge. At this point, instead of grinding to pass the technical interview by sending hundreds of apps, you can start bidding on real world jobs or finding direct clients right away. The best part is you can start finding tasks that are very simple, or rather at a beginner skill level. Simple things like changing styles or adding little widgets, which even as a beginner would be easy for you, but impossible for someone who can't code at all. Of course, these are gonna pay less, but they will pay. And most importantly, you're building up real world experience and a portfolio. Overall, your time to first dollar with this approach could be one to two months, whereas the next lowest strategy, that is the web development strategy, is gonna take you three to six months all in. And like I said, your learning accelerates when you get real world projects. So even if your goal is to get that 400K at Google, with the respect of all your friends, this would still be a step on your way there. 
and in fact it would probably get you faster than studying directly for that. Let me also say that even if you stayed at platform developer for your whole career, that is a perfectly viable way to do it. And in fact, some people are even charging up to 250 an hour for e-commerce development. And you can do the math on how much that is per year. Anyway, if I was starting over today from scratch, this is 100% the strategy I would do. And the steps we just went through, well, that's exactly how I would do it. So if you want to do it on your own for free, all the information is here in this video. You actually have everything you need. But if you do want more structure, all the resources in one place, a community and two dedicated technical mentors, well, that's the main reason why I teamed up with Jan, a dedicated e-commerce developer with three years of experience to create Freemote, the remote developer bootcamp. We cover the A to Z of web and e-commerce development, as well as how to get your first dollar freelancing. And you'll also be in a community of remote developers from around the world. Forgive me for the self-promotion, but I've been working my ass off on this for six months and dumping everything I know into it. Link down below, just check it out. Anyway, regardless of whether you go for this strategy, I hope I've helped you be more realistic and think about your learning in a strategic way. Let me know if you like longer videos packed with info like this. And at this point, I will ask you to subscribe if you made it to the end because I'll have a lot more real world developer strategies for 2021 because I don't just teach this stuff, I also do it. But that said, it's time to get serious this year. Let's make some more money, live anywhere and have more fulfilling work. Now's the time, enough excuses. All right, I'll see you in the next one.